Welcome to Everdome Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we have something a little different for you. We traditionally, once a month, like to bring an unboxing, and uh, I think you'll find this knife a little bit different than what we've been doing. Uh, a lot of times, I'm very fortunate to have individual blacksmith artisan knives. Um, it's very rare that I have corporate knives, unless it's something we're doing like an Amazon review. But today, one of the oldest companies that just it's just got an amazing reputation. Gico knives. We've got something a little bit different from them. So Brunel Cutlery is somebody I purchased uh, this knife from. This is a, it's a bull nose. Have you ever heard of a bull nose? 210 millimeter bull nose Shiragami knife. Now, to, before I even show it to you to imagine, this is what you would see as like a butcher's type of a knife, even maybe like a Jason Friday the 13th kind of a situation. Um, so this is a Japanese made, uh, almost like an American knife. I don't even know if the Asian community uses this knife shape, but, but I'm sure they try to make the best version they can. This is a Shiragami 2. We're gonna get into that with a cherry handle. So I'm excited to show it to you because it's still in the box fresh. Um, so let's get into it. So this Jico 210 millimeter knife um, with the octagonal cherry handle. Um, so Jico Corporation came around in 1901, so more than 100 years old. Ataro Jico was a knife sharpener who just wanted to give people the best. And this company is really, really, really known for their Hatsuka, which is the finish. They just totally believe that the way they finish the edge of the knife that is extremely sharp and that it will retain its sharpness for a very long time. You can see the difference from the mirror to the Kasumi as well as you can, can see the traditional Jiko uh, engraved logo. We're definitely gonna show you the, um, the choil area. I'm gonna turn it over. And you're also gonna see the thickness of the spine. You can just see how clean and polished their work is. And we'll go ahead and rotate for you into where it fits in the tang as well as the thickness of the spine of this knife. So this 210 millimeter knife does not look like a normal chef knife and I have a great chef knife out to compare. So let me go ahead and move some of this. Um, Jico is a manufacturer, it is not a person. It was a person in 1901, is now a manufacturer. Uh, <clears throat> and they are in Sakai, which is known for like hundreds of incredible manufacturers. So I have another 210 millimeter. Um, it's an Anrayu chef knife. Um, just so you can one, see the difference in the thickness of the spine. Now with the Jiko knife being something for butchery, it's interesting to me that it is, it is actually very thin. It definitely should do a slicing motion, not, uh, not as much chopping. We can see profile-wise, just the difference between the flatness of the, the Guto, the chef knife, versus this bull nose, they call it, hooking, very round rocker. Okay, so two different knives at the same length, made for two different purposes. And... Uh, we're going to be showing you this night. It's kind of funny now that I really have a chance to see it in person. You know, I really get to see like how flat the profile is from here. So the belly begins so high. So there is like an area here for possibly some chopping. I don't think of this knife as a knife for standard kitchen use. I'm sure anyone can use any knife anytime for any reason but it maybe needs to be optimized. Um, we have a lot of specialty knives that do one thing. So this is definitely a slicer, and from the thickness, you think about its release. So the first thing we like to do, I mean, this is fresh out, um, out the box. Okay, 
So we're going to do a quick, well, let's just go ahead. Well, let's do the, do we do the best? Do we do the paper? Yeah, we'll do the best so it's not disturbed. And we are set up and ready to go. Now, you know, I know these companies try to do them like amazing when they leave, but then they get shipped in a box. They move around. Manufacturers have them in warehouses. People handle them. I'm excited for how sharp it should be just from what I've read, but I still, I still know human beings got involved. So let's see what's up. So we love seeing 130, definitely up there with some of the lowest we've ever seen out of the box. Um, definitely a number I would think that I would see considering what I read. I mean, that they focus on their sharpness. Um, you want to cut stuff now. I do want to cut stuff now. <laughs> um, I want to listen. I got the microphone over here. Um, we always like to hear how absolutely quiet that was. My wife is shaking her head with a smile of um, that, 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 that is no effort. Um, it is, it is continuous. I mean, you, you, you can see, even though it tried to wrinkle, it could not escape the edge. Um, danger, Will Robinson. Danger. And it's long. Keep your fingers all the way. Yeah. It's got a bite. Even the paper, the paper was crooked right there and it just had a bite. And it, it's just continuously. Mm. Yeah, this is what we like to see. We like to see that bite. You've seen it on the show sometimes where we, yeah, the bite is incredible. Um, so we are going to actually show you what it looks like in, in motion with, say, some onions. Uh, again, I think of this as like a butcher slicing knife, not a around the kitchen, but it looks like it's something we're able to do. So... Uh, We're going to be uh, having some steak here in a little while, so we're we're doing this for you, and we're making dinner. So this is serves two purposes. So I'm noticing. I mean, it does look. I can go a little bit towards the the knife. Now you can see the profile; it starts to bend. So I'm having to come in a little bit more, not so close to the edge, um, to to get involved here. Just because of how long the knife is. Just um, where. It's where the curve, my wife asked, am I having to alter my cutting style because of how long the knife is? The, the knife is actually a very standard size. The curve is very abrupt towards the end. Uh -huh. A lot of times I'm able to use, and I'll actually, you know what, I've, I've got the chef knife out, I'll use it. Um, I'll be able to show you the comparison in the cutting technique that I would use um, to do this knife. So let me get this off of here. Got this brown paper. Well, it's a show. Let's just, let's just keep moving, people. Let's keep moving. So, by comparison, I'm going to get the chef knife out. Okay, the Guto, right? So, I'm probably doing the onion. Might be in the beginning or the front. Some people might be, be more down here. You know, so, I could see me towards the front. I think some of you would be a little bit more towards the middle. With this knife, I don't think the front is an option because you can see the curve is going to actually not make it. So I definitely have to be a little more conscious that I'm towards the uh, middle of the knife. But because it's so flat at the bottom, we're definitely making contact with the cutting board. Um, this knife is sharp. <laughs> It is my first Jico knife. I had some opportunities before. I kind of stayed away from the idea of a manufacturer versus a blacksmith. Um, reading more about Jico, I would definitely tell you it's 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 one like Masamoto. If you're going to own a manufacturer, it would be one to own. Um, if you see me crying in a minute, it's not just because I'm happy. It's because onions are involved. And we will have to uh, start wiping down some, some knives here because they are reactive. <laughs> it, 
And if you saw me, I mean, that knife was just doing work. So, so we are going to uh, pause, cook a steak, and then use this knife the way it was intended. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Dinner's ready. We got everything cooked, and there's probably even a little smoke in the kitchen. So let's use this knife the way it was intended. We uh, let's go ahead and look at this bad boy here. Like, oh my gosh, we've been letting it rest. Super excited. Oh yeah. I mean, that just came right off. And no, the dogs are not gonna get lucky. Little gristle there. Well, okay, yeah. All right. Oh yeah, look at that. Don't don't mess your knife up, Greg. Oh my goodness. Trying to make sure I don't accidentally hit the knife. Oh man, this is just, it's butter. I mean, whoa. And yes, this is gonna be an amazing dinner and I'm super happy about it. So we've got to the side some of those onions you saw earlier. We got some mushrooms, we got some asparagus. Possibly some champagne, just because we didn't get to drink it for New Year's. Yes. Beautifully cooked steak, by the way. I like mine medium rare like that. The little pink. Oh, yeah. Okay. The wife likes hers a little bit more medium. So we'll see if we, uh, we got the wife taken care of here. What do you think, honey? Yeah, we nailed it. Good job. I'm really being careful to try not to hit this fork with the knife and then chip the knife. Very good. And then, uh, let's see, how does he do it? How does he do it? Does he do the little, woo, little bit for the wife. There you go. She only likes a little sprinkle. Listen, we're hungry. This is hot. That's definitely not a dull moment. Holy mackerel. Time to eat. We look forward to seeing you guys Friday nights. We've been making some nuggets for those Tuesday nights. We appreciate it. Weston Wars was awesome, right? We got some more knives you haven't seen. We're looking forward to that. Thank you. Thanks for supporting us, man. Please hit that like button. Please make some comments. Please tell us what you like. We love you guys. Happy New Year. Boom. We're out.